Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. Hopefully, hopefully we've got our timings right, and that's uh, that's three o'clock, and and you're able to join us. Okay. Um, I'm James. I'm the sports development manager for the college, and uh, I'm here to I manage all the non-academic side of sport at uh, Barnet Southgate College, uh, and I'm here today to tell you about sports academies, uh, but also about the the sports curriculum uh, on behalf of uh, my teaching colleagues. So. BSC Bears is just a little uh, little intro to to that uh, that brand name, I suppose that that logo. Um, essentially, it's just a way to to foster identity across all the different academy programs that we we offer. So that's when you hear, hear the name Bears, that's what uh, that's what's referring to. Some buy into it more than others, um, but uh, yeah, we we tend to use that on our branding. So who are we? So BSC is the sports department for Violin Southgate College. Um, we are the largest sports department in London uh, and one of the most successful in the UK uh, and also one of the largest in the UK when you total across all the, the various different learners we have either studying sport or engaged in sport uh, either through as an academy athlete uh, or, or otherwise. So we have current academies in uh, to for Tottenham Hotspur and for men's football uh, with Tottenham Hotspur for women's football as well. We have the NFL Academy. We have the athletics program at Lee Valley, uh, a boxing program with England Boxing, a tennis academy with Linux Tennis, a basketball academy um, with Lloyd Gardner as the, the performance director for that, and a leadership program for, for those who are studying sport but don't necessarily fit into one of those academies. Um, uh, but other people from the college can access that as they wish. So the college is split, uh, as I'm sure you already deduced from some of the other talks, uh, across North London. So we have the Southgate campus, the Wood Street campus uh, and the Conondale campus. The main base for the sports department is the Southgate campus. Uh, most students, uh, well, every student bar one remote delivery site who's studying a sports department academic course is based at Southgate. Um, but if you're based uh, Wood Street doing A-levels, but you're still an academy athlete, that's fine. But most people make their way over to Southgate through one of our transports to hook up with their various academy programmes and gone on, go on to their various training locations. So when we say the sports department, that encompasses everything from the teaching staff through to my team and the academy coaches and the sports staff there and the, and the sports enrichment team personnel. So you can almost split the sports department into two. You've got the academic side, uh, that's the teachers and the curriculum. And you've got the non-academic side of the sports performance. So all the academy programs, uh, the enrichment, the gym, the outreach, the commercial, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and you don't have to study sports to be in an academy, but a lot of students do tend to do both. So what do you do when you're involved in sports at Barnet and Southfield College? It, you are on a study program. You might have heard that word mentioned before. So when you're a student of the college, you're on a study program, and that's a combination of academics, uh, your academic study, your main qualification, be that a BTEC in sport, level one, level two, level three, an MBQ, a YMCA, or A-levels, or a BTEC in business, that's your academic study provision, that's your qualification. In the case of being an academy athlete, it's that, plus your academy, English and maths if you still require it, um, so if you haven't got the, the requisite grade to, to stop doing that, work experience hours on top of that, applied work experience, and then your tutorial program, your pastoral program. Um, so that's roughly what the study program encompasses, that's what goes into the pot. Um, it, how we operate, we partner with these industry leading bodies to deliver all our programs. So the academy programs is partnered with uh, some excellent uh, partners and industry leading bodies. And we utilize a lot of world-class facilities to base them out of. So when we go and train, we're utilising the best facilities that are out there that we can. One of the one of the strengths of the sports provision at Saint Barnet Southgate College, uh, I always say, both from the curriculum side and within my teams and and our partners, is is the experience of the staff. So our staff have years of industry experience, and a lot of us still work in the industry on top of doing what we do. Uh, at the college. So in terms of the teachers, Jack Dimitriou, England National C Team Physiotherapist with his own practice. A few of the teachers are currently practicing personal trainers, some uh, coaching in higher levels of football and other sports. 
Um, others are strength and conditioning coaches, fitness instructors and so forth. I myself work for the Premier League on side, on top of my full-time job with the college, working with the academies, uh, but also with uh, the, the first teams recently with COVID as well. So we're trying to bring all that experience, all that knowledge of what we do back into the college to assist in the way that we deliver our programmes and the way that we deliver to you students and to give you that elite and that top of the range experience as, we, as much as we possibly can. So what are we preparing you for when you're a student, either studying sport or part of a sports academy or, or both uh, when you're at the college? Uh, yes, fundamentally you are at a college to get a qualification. So one of those qualifications that I mentioned earlier, which I'll come on to in a bit. But it's more than that. It's not just about getting, getting your vocational or, or academic qualification. Yes, it's also to be a better athlete if you're in one of our sports programmes, whichever one it is. Yes, we're looking to develop you as an athlete as well, but it's also we're looking to prepare you and develop your life skills, uh, becoming a more independent and responsible adult, um, learning those behaviours um, that are going to set you off and, and put you on a good footing for the rest of your life and rest of your career. So I always like to say that we're looking at you as both a student, as an athlete, but also as a young person. Uh, particularly more so as we move forward in the next year, two years, about how the impact, the impact of COVID, um, the tolls on young people's mental health, the tolls on the impact and disruption it's had on your education and, and your lives and all our lives, basically, and how that's going to affect um, your growth moving forwards. So we have tried to do a quick poll. Um, I'm not sure whether it's going to work or not. Um, it might be in your chat functions, it might be somewhere around there, but uh, there's three very quick questions. And I've, the reason we're doing it is to try and shape my focus on who's tuned in and, and what people are looking to try and get out of this talk, whether it's an academy or et cetera. So um, I'll read out the questions, have a search. If you can find it, great. If you can't, don't worry about it. And if you can't find it, listen to the questions and pop your answer in the chat box and that's fine. Um, the three quick questions are, what are you hoping to find out most from today? So is it about a sports academy? Is it about the sports courses? Is it about enrichment? Is it about facilities, et cetera? Et cetera. Two, what sports do we have represented in the audience? Do I have male football? Do I have female footballers? Do I have tennis players, boxers, athletes, uh, NFL academy parties interested, basketball players? Do I have athletes from another sport? Um, or do I have people looking to be coaches, et cetera, et cetera? And thirdly, do you consider yourself a TAS athlete? Now, TAS I'll come on to in a little bit, but what I mean by that is, are you essentially an international or national level athlete or at the very worst regional level athlete in your sport? And that's somewhat subjective, I understand. Um, so, yeah, I'm not going to take that and think, do anything with that information as such. It's just giving me a flavour. <laughs> Um, but I'll come on to why about that later. So, the partners that we work with, the, the, the brand names, I guess, are, are displayed on the screen in front of you. So this gives me an opportunity to talk about a little bit of the Sports Academy programmes and what they offer as part of them and what we've got. So I mentioned male football with Tottenham Hotspur Football Club. So that's our boys football programme. We are one of the leading football programmes in the country for, for that in terms of we've produced a professional footballer every year for the last eight or nine years. Uh, the national titles that the programmes achieve, the regional titles that the programmes achieve, uh, the links into non-league and the progressions into non-league football, the US scholarship, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So how it works, partner with Tottenham Hotspur, it's Tottenham Hotspur Global Football Development Programme coaches, most of whom work within the academy and there's that strong academy coaching focus that's brought into our programme. You have two training sessions a week as a minimum, four of you are in the elite programme that we offer, and then a games programme on top of that. So in terms of the games programme, the first team plans something called the National Football Youth League, which is against other professional football clubs, college programmes, other shadow operations, if you like, for, for the main academy, which is what our first team is. It's a shadow programme for the main academy, the boys who, who are just outside of that ECCP um, academy structure so if you're not in a professional football academy this is the next level down from it um i think it's important also to mention harringay borough in that link because they're, they're 
brand is promoted there. It's, we hire the facility at Coles Park to deliver the Tottenham Hotspur program. And it's more than just a straight off facility hire. It's a lot of links into the football club. The Harringay Bar under 18s is, uh, is part, you have to be on the Tottenham program to be part of it. And it's a partnership with that there. And that allows our better players to play in the FA Youth Cup, to play in the Southern Counties Flooded Youth League and get play evening football under floodlights and get that extra development feel, feel there. But it's also important to say that we cater for a range of levels on the Tottenham programme. So, yes, we've got some very elite boys looking to progress into the professional game or have come out of the programme looking to get back in it or go into semi-professional football. But we also have a fourth, fifth, sixth team who are boys who just want to get better, enjoy their football and do it alongside their academic qualification and everything in between. Um, and there's also coaching opportunities as part of the Tottenham programme with the Coaching Excellence Centre, which I can't dwell on too much now, but if you want to chat about it later, we can. We also have the women's football programme. Uh, we strongly link with the, the women's section of the football club there. Uh, hopefully some of the Tottenham Hotspur under 16s might be on the talk here. Um, our programme's always been almost the de facto youth team for the women's side of the football club. Um, up until recently when they've got into the WSL and the, the structures have had to change somewhat. So I've supported uh, Chris Gould, who's the talent pathway manager, and worked closely with him on supporting the WSL Academy. And our programme essentially just sits just below the WSL Academy. It's almost like the under 19s, although you can be 16 to 22 to be in it. Um, so the idea is if you're not quite there to get into a WSL Academy, you come on to our programme and in a year's time you might be and you're, you're in the best place to impress and to develop and to be transitioned into the WSL Academy in a year or two years time. One of the WSL Academy's training nights is also on site at the college and in non-COVID times when hopefully we get a handle on that, our girls can access that program as well, that Monday night performance night, which is S&C, which is um, TAS lifestyle support workshops and psychology workshops as well. Um, this program has been phenomenally successful down the years. Lots of girls, some of the current WSL first team squad have come through the program. Uh, England Lionesses, England Colleges national team girls, a Welsh national team player, uh, national titles, regional titles. Um, and we're looking to continue that. It's, and I think it's important also to say that whilst Tottenham Hotspur have another women's programme with NCC, it's night and day. Theirs is more enrichment. This is about performance uh, and uh, developing you as players alongside your education and it has a wider uh, offer of education there. In terms of the games programme, they also play in the National Football Youth League now against other football club women's programmes. We also have the NFL Academy. Now, I don't want to dwell too much on the NFL Academy because I think a lot of that is well known and speaks for itself. It's part of their elite player pathway. Players from all over Europe can come to it. Three field practices, three film sessions, three lifting sessions in the gym uh, with the goal of trying to promote boys into the NCAA Div 1 scholarship groups. We also have a tennis programme that's got three tiers within it. So Performance tier, tier one, if you're 1.1 to 5.1 or 5.2 rated, uh, eight to 10 hours a week of cope of hours towards your tennis development on top of your academic qualification. Uh, if you're in the next tier, which is 6.1 to 8.2, four to six hours, and then below that, two to three hours a week towards your tennis and looking to develop you as a workforce potentially for the game. So coaching badges, uh, almost like a coach mentorship there. The tennis program has been really successful, well, since its inception, really, into, uh, but also last the last couple of years about NCAA scholarship. So we've had um, two in the last two years, which is a big achievement in tennis, so, into Div 1 programmes, as well as all the national titles that come with it. Boxing, partner with England Boxing. We're not looking for boxers to leave their clubs to be part of it. It's a supplementary offer to that. So come to your course come and get your boxing assisted and also continue your boxing. We work with your partner coaches outside and you get three sessions a week, plus a lot of development coaching badges, level one, level two, box awards, et cetera, et cetera. We do put the boxers, student athletes through their medicals. We do offer sparring when COVID doesn't 
allow you not to do it um, in, our, in our gym and that's based on site. And we also have the athletics program, really successful program. That's some of the top athletes in the country by power of 10, sprinters, top four, top five jumpers uh, in it. Two to four sessions a week at Lee Valley with our head coach, Mark Finley, and, and his team there and Gemma's team. Um, you can stay with your current coach and still be part of the athletics program. Um, and we will work with your current coach. If you want to do two and do two with them and just do your s c with us, that's fine. Um, different athletes choose different things. Um, but again, really, really growing that athletics program. It has been from the very start, but it, it's a really good dynamic now. So I'm not going to dwell too much uh, on this one, but this is a little bit about how we shape the curriculum or how the teachers and staff, I should say, shape the curriculum staff at the college. Um, the key points to say, then adding on to that um, that message earlier around uh, the staff's expertise, the key point is it's not just teaching from the textbook and not just delivering the course, it's trying to shape the courses that the sports department deliver, so the BTECs and the MBQs and the YMCA's, that's going to maximise um, you as students and make you more employable later and more beneficial into your, your university progression or whatever it might be. In terms of the academic offer in sport, uh, these are the BTEC. So we've got the level one, the level two, the level three, and the level three extended diploma, or it's called the foundation diploma in its first year. So the level one is an entry entry level course. That's one year. You need two GCSEs of any grade to really get onto it. The level two is one year. You need four GCSEs, grades nine to three, or A to D in old money, um, to get onto it, or have done the BTEC level one. And that's a one year course. The level three is a two year qualification. So the level three extended certificate, that's a two A level equivalency course. Um, and you need five GCSEs, grades four to nine to get onto it. And ideally at least one of maths or English. And then the extended diploma uh, is a three A level equivalency. So if you do that and you achieve a distinction profile, that's like applying to university with three grade A's at, you know, at, uh, at A level, for example, in terms of UCAS points. For that, you need six GCSEs, grades four to nine, including maths and English. The only difference between the level three extended certificate and the level three extended diploma is the fact that um, you do more modules, hence why it's worth more UCAS points. But it's still a level three qual. Okay. Where you come in and start at depends on what GCSEs you get. You don't have to start at the level one. You can start at the level three or level three extended if that's what you've got the grades for. But um, if you don't, you can start on the level two and move up internally for example and they have had students start at level one and after four years with us have graduated with an extended diploma in sport as well so these are the vocational routes so we have the mbq in activity leadership which is coaching that's the same entry requirements as the btec level two uh, and then we have the ymca level two in personal training and gym instruction and the ymca level three in personal training and gym instruction so they are industry specific qualifications. They're looking to, uh, the, the, the YMCA's are making you qualify to be a personal trainer or gym instructor, um, industry recognized. All of these routes are not the ones to go down if you want to go to university. These are more practical quals that you have a lot of practical experience in. With the, co with the MVQ, you're going into schools, delivering PE classes, after school clubs, with the YMCA's, you're in the gym, you're taking clients and learning the underpinning knowledge for both of them in the classroom from the teaching staff. And I just want to also reiterate before I move on that you can do A levels and be on a sports academy, but I'm not mentioning it here because you can log into the A level talk on Wednesday for that. Higher education, we also offer an HNC, which after two years is an HND in sport and exercise science. That might be an option for you. I don't know if that's equivalent age groups in the room. It's more cost effective than university. It's certainly cheaper. It's more personalised. And you can do an H&D for two years and go straight into the third year of a degree at university and convert it to a degree. OK, firing through these now because I'm conscious of the time. TAS, I mentioned that earlier. Essentially, that stands for Talented Athlete Scholarship Scheme. It's a marker of excellence, OK, it's to say that if you are a talented athlete of international, national, or at worst, regional level in your sport, so you see Jess Snaz there, who's an England international when she was with us, 
We are experts at handling talents and athletes with education. Academic flexibility, they need to go away to national team call-ups or work flexibly to support their education while they're away. We deliver workshops to help them and guide them in everything in terms of being a performance athlete. So whether that's dealing with pressure, whether that's uh, nutrition, psychology, anti-doping, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we were the first college in, in the country to have it, and we're still one of the only colleges in London and South East to have it. So it kind of shows that we are in the business of catering for elite athletes within education. Healthy and safe, so we have a physio clinic on site. So if anyone who's one of our academy athletes or a TAS athlete is injured, does need treatment, they can access that clinic. Uh, free of charge. NFL Academy has deals about itself, so they have on-field clinical teams uh, and after practice uh, medical support as well. There's two gyms at the campus, Southgate campus, the NFL Academy gym with a performance gym and the original founding gym. Uh, it's free entry for students for the founding gym and training programs can be written for all our student athletes. Uh, the NFL Academy gym, you have to be um, supervised by an SNC coach to be in there and that's scheduled as and when as for each program. We do transport all our students to and from their various travel training locations on minibuses and coaches. And just to mention that there is a student development welfare officer on the NFL camp. What do we expect of our students? It boils down to four things. Turn up, turn up on time, apply yourself and meet your course mate deadlines. And if you do those things, we invest a lot of money into our programs, a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of ingenuity. And you'll get a fantastic experience and a lot of excellent benefits from it. Because if you don't, then the academics has to come first. And if you're not doing well, stuff starts to get taken away from you on the sporting side. You don't play in fixtures. You might get some of the other opportunities taken away from you because ultimately you need to, you're here to succeed at the college and you're not going to do that if you're not doing everything you need to do uh, in the classroom and outside of the classroom. And just finally, manage your time I've put there. It's not, we're not school going to have a lot of expect expectations on you, training, et cetera, et cetera, and a lot of pressure on you, but you need to manage your time well. We also have enrichment programs at the college for cross college for general students, so tackling activity and activity hub delivering free sport for all at lunchtimes and twilights. So just to exit that, any questions, please? If I go to the Q&A very quickly, how has COVID affected the sport practice here, EGNFL? We've managed to still carry on training uh, all throughout so far. And because of the Department for Education guidelines, we still can carry on at the moment because it's allowed within sport, uh, within um, educational settings. But yeah, we have had to adapt for sure. And it's not been easy. Man, I've also gone fresh in NFL in the school. Uh, okay, I think that's just an answer to my poll question. I'd like to go on to the further education to you, you plan to specialise in sports, please. Are the boys and girls separate or do they join together? I think that's a question on the football. The boys and girls are separate. They don't train together. There's a women's programme, male programme. Regarding NFL Academy, will having lack of game film affect the application? No. Nope. We'll have uh, trial events where we look at your athletic prowess uh, in sort of combined testing. You know, then if anything, Watching your game film is not an object. We're looking at you as a physical specimen, I guess. One of a better physical athlete. When and how to apply. So sports registration form on the website. That's how to apply for one of the academies. Um, to apply for the NFL Academy, the, that's on that landing page as well. My email address uh, is on the presentation or can be accessed on the website, james.edgerly at barnetsouthgate.ac.uk, if you're not sure. If you don't live in London, is there a chance to get into the college? Absolutely. We have students from Wales, from France, from Germany, from Belgium, Holland, Greece, um, who come and live in homestay while they're on our programmes. Oh, what have I done there? So, uh, are we at college every day for this programme? And uh, what is the New City Program? I don't understand the difference. New City College, as I said, they're not the same level as the Barnet Southgate College programme. I think that's a girls' football. This is more proper football development for student athletes and yeah uh, in terms of every day at the college it depends on your timetable depends on your timetable 
as well unfortunately as we've run out of time now guys um if you do have any further questions for james his contact details are on the screen and we thank you for listening take care bye